So um, hi, everyone, and welcome to the interview with um, Dr. Ken St. Louis. And I'm really excited for this because Ken is probably the most famous person that I know. And um, I actually um, I actually met Ken in person um, one time um, three, um, three or four years ago. He was he was traveling through um, Asia and, and we met it. Uh, we met in an airport and talked for about an hour. And that was one of the, uh, the highlights of my life because because uh, when I first learned about cluttering, then um, the, um, then I searched, um, I searched on the internet, and the, the first, uh, the first thing that wasn't about decluttering was uh, was Ken's old ASHA. Um, um, uh, I, I, I'm not sure what it is, like a like, like a pamphlet on um, on cluttering, and so I so so I read that over and over and over again, ne I'm never never thinking that I'd like meet uh, meet the author or. Um, do a do a YouTube video with the author. So um, so so anyway, this is just really really cool for me because because um, Ken's one of my uh, personal like longtime um, heroes. Um, just um, just because he explained something in a very very accessible way that um, that nobody knew about and um, and is um, and and is something that, um, that, that that helped like, like that explanation just helped me a, a ton. Even though it's uh, what, what is it like a thousand words or whatever. But anyway, um, so. Uh, so, so anyway, that's my uh, that's my introduction of, of Ken St. Louis, and and um, um, uh, um, do you want to give a better introduction or or, or what's a? Oh, I I couldn't do any better than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so uh, so 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 to start uh, to start out with um, your um, your uh, you're someone you're someone with stuttering, not um, not with uh, not with cluttering. And um, and and probably um, probably you've been asked this question like over and over again. But why um, why did you uh, why did you pick to, um, to 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 dive into cluttering initially? Uh, because like like most of the most of the speech pathologists that I uh, that I know or that I've met said, oh yeah yeah I know um, I know a little bit about cluttering. We did like one uh, one class in college on that. Um, so so um, so. Um, being different than like all the other speech pathologists, except for like four or five people that have written books on cluttering, um, you um, you um, you you jumped in and um, and spend a significant amount of time um, figuring it out and and figuring out how to um, how to explain it in a very accessible way. So um, so so why? Okay, well um, I, I I wish I could. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for for. Uh, having me on this interview, and uh, uh, I'm uh, very honored, and uh, and I certainly uh, remember with great pleasure our our visit at the uh, uh, airport in Bangkok um, uh, those year a few years ago, and and uh, um, and I will also say that uh, um, you were sort of a hero to me as well um, prior to that because um, you were the first really consumer uh, uh, or person who stutter or clutters who is not a speech language pathologist who really set up uh, the online uh, Yahoo group at that time and and uh, and helped out lots of people um, probably way more than you know so I, I want to thank you as well um, oh, um, um, thanks yeah, yeah that was a uh, that was a fun kind of interesting point in my life when I was um, I mean, I was pretty heavily contributing to this um, old Yahoo group on uh, um, trying to uh, because um, because um, during that time, kind of my motivation was that my my speech was improving really, really rapidly, and I wanted to record as much as I could in in these Yahoo group posts um, while uh, while it was still like fresh in uh, fresh in my in, in my mind. And, and, and Yahoo groups is shutting down like. Uh, well, it's already mostly shut down, uh, but it's it's going to be like completely inaccessible on the fifteenth of this month. Um, but but luckily, I've saved all the files. So um, so so one of my like long uh, one of my things is to go through and kind of decode. Oh, okay, this is what I was feeling back then. This is um, um, because a lot of that uh, a lot of my motivation was saying, okay, well, um, I know. Um, I know in the future my speech is going to be much much better than it is now, and I want to record as much as I can about like all the stuff all the stuff going on in my head while I'm kind of transitioning. So, oh, um, so, so yeah, it was uh, it was a kind of cool experience for me, and yeah. um, and, and and I don't think it was uh, that, that's cool. I helped out other people. I was 
Um, I, I guess with my description, I was pretty like self-interested because because um, I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, 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 nothing uh, succeeds like success. So, um, well, okay, my story. I uh, stuttered ever since I could remember. Um, I grew up. Um, I, I never rem remember not stuttering. Um, and looking back, it probably started pretty much in a typical way, uh, probably when I was uh, two and a half to three. Um, it kind of probably came and went, and then it, it gradually uh, became worse and worse. Um, although for me, stuttering was never so severe that uh, it really prevented me from, from doing most of the things that I wanted to do. Uh, it was just an impediment that I had to overcome to do that. Um, I remember uh, probably in high school, it was at its worst. Um, I was uh, you know, having difficulty, especially on the telephone, um, calling up and for example, asking someone for a date. Um, and of course, at those days, there was only one telephone in the house and, and the parents answered the phone usually and uh, uh, it was pretty embarrassing sometimes. But um, um, I don't want to get into this too much, but uh, when I was um, um, in high school, I um, <clears throat> went to a, a, a summer speech clinic at the University of Wyoming. Uh, and uh, I became extremely fluent uh, and decided then that I would become a speech language pathologist. Of course, then it was a speech therapist. Um, we called it then. I, um, I also, um, um, at that time, I, I wasn't going to just help people who stutter. I was going to solve the problem of stuttering. Um, uh, probably born a hundred years too soon for that, if, if, mm -hmm. if, if that maybe be optimistic, I don't know. But um, I, I relapsed after that. I went to college, I studied speech language pathology and, and my stuttering came back, but I, I had a, quite a dramatic uh, uh, improvement about midway through my, uh, my university years. And so I became extremely fluent and I've stayed pretty much fluent uh, all of uh, the rest of the time. That is except I went in the Peace Corps to Turkey and I learned Turkish and um, my stuttering came back with a vengeance there. And then, and I still stutter as soon as I start speaking Turkish. Um, so it's just sort of that little split in my brain. My own, that's my kind of my story in a, in a nutshell, but how did I get involved with cluttering? Um, I didn't have any, I might've heard about it in my early training, but um, I, was, um, I was a doctoral student. Um, I didn't hear really much about my undergraduate or my master's program. Uh, but my doctoral program, I decided to, to do an independent study and, and look at physiological research and stuttering the 20 years uh, up to the uh, 20 years back from, from that time, which was uh, the early 1970s. And, um, uh, and, and cluttering just popped up as one of those items that are or, or those areas that there had been a fair amount of research, mostly in Eastern Europe. Uh, Czechoslovakia at that time, and um, and also some other places in Central Europe, in Zurich, uh, Switzerland, and so on. Um, I wrote that paper, and um, it sort sort of sat there, and and then I I finished up and I started teaching, and um, and I wanted to have a lecture on cluttering, um, so I started looking around and I found a paper by Dazel Weiss um, or Weiss. Um, who um, had written a book um, in 1964, which was really the first serious book that, um, uh, that most people that, uh, in, in my generation knew about uh, that, that focused on cluttering. It's an excellent little book. Um, and um, it, it, it was a book here. Um, and, and, and he, um, 
he did he wrote a history of cluttering and and um, uh, his thoughts about what it was how to treat it and so on and i uh, was no more i was rather intrigued with it but it certainly was not a goal of mine to to go pursue a lot of research in cluttering that happened because a student of mine had um 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 a student of mine had uh, uh, been impressed with it and wanted to do a master's thesis and um, on cluttering. And I thought, well, okay. Um, and so without going into too much detail, one thing led to the next and, and I arranged for, uh, to, to get some data that I had been involved in collecting after I returned from the Peace Corps, the National Speech and Hearing Survey. Um, and we did one of the first uh, studies on, we might just say potential clutterers because we, we couldn't identify cluttering for sure then, but with some other symptoms uh, we put together and we were able to work through this database of 39,000 uh, public school children. And so she did the study and um, it was well received. Um, I did a few other studies in, in cluttering, um, try to define it basically because uh, I was, I'd become convinced that it was, cluttering could be virtually anything. Um, and so, uh, I decided that if I was going to do something, we need to come up with an operational definition that, that would work so that we could gather some data about cluttering, get a science of cluttering. And so um, I never claimed that I knew much about cluttering. As a matter of fact, I claimed just the opposite. Um, um, and, and I would still hold to that claim. Um, I don't consider myself to be an expert in, in cluttering, but I, I know some things about it. Um, at that time uh, in the US, there was very little uh, information on cluttering. Uh, it had pretty much been ignored in the textbooks on, on fluency disorders or stuttering. Um, and so um, I, I simply, <laughs> I've sort of said jokingly, if, if you wanna become um, an expert on something, find some condition that nobody knows anything about, do one decent study on it, um, publish it, and um, everybody will think you're an expert. And I guess that's what happened. Um, um, and so uh, that's what that's my entry in into cluttering. But because I started getting so many inquiries and invitations to write chapters and per collaborate with people, I guess I I sort of just fell into it and began to. To um, to work on 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 cluttering and um, I, my primary interest was was always stuttering, but uh, but it it was just almost um, in I mean I I just would say okay I'm going to do these studies I'm going to move on to other things and but uh, as academics do things. Um, as you, 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 you sort of get into a club and, and people start citing your work and inviting you to do things and presenting papers and so on. And, and, and before you know it, you kind of think you're, you're important. And, um, um, and I guess that sort of happened to me, but then I used to step back and think, well, um, I, I, I made a contribution in terms of of identifying cluttering, coming up with a with a, an operational definition, which has not been uh, completely accepted, but it has uh, made a difference. And so uh, I'll stop there at this point. That's kind of how I got involved. Cool. And and kind of a follow up question on that is is um, uh, what the, um, the the pamphlet that you wrote for Asha where um, where where does that fit in in the whole um, story? Oh, that, that, was, that was that was probably the the uh, little brochure um, cluttering it was called um, was uh, at the I, I'm sure I was invited 
to, uh, to write it. Um, and I'm going to say, I, I don't even remember the exact date that was. That was probably what, the uh, early 90s, maybe, uh, uh, maybe late 80s, uh, 1980s. I don't remember. Um, but, um, but I was invited to write it. And uh, for, um, it was for the, just an ASHA uh, article. Uh, that's our kind of our house um, magazine uh, for the American Speech Language Hearing Association. Um, and then uh, it was further picked up. Um, I, I wrote the article for ASHA and then, and then I got uh, an invitation from Jane Fraser at the, the, the Stuttering Foundation of America, now just called the Stuttering Foundation, to, to put that into a brochure. And um, so much of the information is in both places. They're not quite exactly the same, but, um, but the brochure uh, then appeared in the Stuttering Foundation's list of brochures. And, um, and it, it's been translated to several languages, I think. Um, and uh, um, that's about what I remember. I don't remember the exact details, Joseph, sorry. Oh uh, no, that's uh, uh, that's uh, that's really really cool background. So, uh, um, so 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 the thing I remember about that is it is it was written in very very accessible language. Uh, like like it doesn't uh, it doesn't sound like a it doesn't sound like a university professor um, trying to sound smart. Uh, it sounds like someone that's like genu genuinely trying to like explain um, explain this this thing to um, to people that may not may not have heard of, heard about it before, or, or or like people like me that just got diagnosed and is like oh well. Um, I need some information on this. Is this is this even like a real thing? So um, so so um, do, do you remember do you remember writing that, or was it just like one of like hundreds of uh, and 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 um, what's um, what's the process of like like um, state um, uh, what's the process of because uh, because you're probably writing like super technical like stuff with like um, twenty syllable words and um, and, then, and then then you go over and write this like super accessible um, um, pamphlet. It, it, it seems like you have to like shift your brain a little bit in gears or whatever yeah i think so i i will say that that um um i i pretty much wrote it i i was writing it i know certainly for this for the asha magazine to some extent and to a great extent for the stuttering foundation the brochure was had to be accessible to uh people who cluttered because that's that's who was primarily going to read it or mm -hmm. Uh, speech language pathologists who would then turn around and share it with, with uh, uh, potential uh, clients who, who cluttered. Um, so I certainly had that in mind. I will say that uh, that um, certainly at the ASHA article, I, there there were uh, they they have their own uh, staff of editors and they they did some editing, but not a whole lot. I I just think that, um, and I've always been of the mind that that. Uh, if we don't, if people can't understand what we're saying, there's no point in us saying it. Um, I mean, if 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 you write for um, for scientists, I mean, they want every T crossed and every I dotted, and and uh, uh, it's it's. I mean, they you can't leave anything to chance. But but when you write for um, you know your clients or you write a, a therapy report um, that's going to be read by the clients. I, I sort of always had the impression that they should be able to understand it. Um, um, I, I wouldn't say that I'm a gifted writer that way, but, uh, but I've never been a fan of, of fancy jargon. Um, um, well, and um, and that's um, and that's cool. And I, I, I but uh, like I like I already said a couple times, I really appreciate uh, what you did, especially with that uh, with that pamphlet. So um, so so one uh, one question I have is your your book with Florence Myers, um, and and uh, a little bit of background. Like when I start when I started learning about cluttering, then I uh, I, I heard about Dessa Weiss's book, and then I, I tried to track it down. And this uh, this was before this was before Amazon. Like like on Amazon now, um, there are like four copies for sale, um, like, um, and, and and it's interesting. The market value of Dessa Weiss's book has gone up, up, up and down. Like like at one point, it was uh, the the cheapest you could find it was for a hundred dollars, and now um, now I think uh, you can get it for like 30, um, 30 bucks on Amazon. Oh, um, wow. it's old and used and whatever, but 
um, so, uh, oh, and, and I kind of, um, I kind of have a point with this, but um, I, I, I always try to not maze too much in my, um, in my YouTube videos, but, um, but, but, but yeah, this is, um, so, so, so sorry, what, um, what, uh, what was I, what was, oh, um, your, your book with Florence Myers. Yeah. So, um, so, so, so I, um, I finally tracked down Dessa Weiss's book, and then uh, um, then I then I tried to find like every book I could on on cluttering at the time. And your 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 book on cluttering with uh, with Florence Myers was actually the most difficult book to track down. And even uh, um, do you know the uh, do you know the book called Tacalalia? And I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but it's it's like from 1917. Yeah, um, I, I don't think I have that book, but I'm, uh, is it was that by uh, Arnold? Um, actually, I'm um, I'm. Um, I'm not sure. It, um, it was um, it was a uh, it, and it might not it, it might not be 1917. It might be like 1930 or whatever. But um, but yeah. but it was it was a good like 20 years before Dessa Weiss, and, yeah. um, and and I think it was the oldest book in my house. So um, yeah. so, um, so that uh, uh, that book from like the uh, 19 uh, 1910s, 1920s, 1940s, uh, when, uh, whenever uh, that book was actually much easier to track down than your um, your book with Florence Meyer <laughs> <laughs> that was published in like the 90s. So. Um, so, so I think, uh, like, like, like um, I, and I don't, I don't remember how I found it, but I think, I think I, I bought the like one copy that, um, that, um, that, that was ever available because, because I, I don't think you can find it now, um, except, um, except for you, um, you generously um, got the, got the electronic version, and now it's available electronically, so, so everyone can read it, which is really, really cool. Um, but, but, but actual like physical copies of the book, um, that, um, that book was just impossible. Well, well um, almost impossible to find. And, and I think it took me like four years of searching to actually like track down a, a physical copy. So, um, so, so anyway, um, with, um, with that, uh, with that book, like, um, like all the stuff that you said, um, in addition to that, then, uh, uh, then you underwent the project to write a whole um, entire book and collaborate with Florence Meyer. So, um, so, so it's so, so it's a little bit more intense than just uh, well, unless unless Florence Meyer's muscled you into uh, writing the book. But um, but, but but anyway, um, um, can can you talk about the the book process and that, that's a that's a you're getting all these things that have, to have all well everything has a story behind it and I'm, I I wish they were all. Uh, um, you know, well, it was a wonderful um, collaboration that was planned months in advance. But OK, the story of, of, of that book, um, can I step away and just go grab it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, just, you actually have a copy? That's yeah. Um, that's OK, this is. This is the, the original book, um, um, and um, <clears throat> and then it was republished by uh, Singular. Um, it's got yeah, and, that and that's, uh, that's the one that I uh, yeah. that's the one that I got a hold of is the blue copy. Well, so the first one, I I, I went to the the first or second Oxford Disfluency Conference, and they've had numerous ones, and actually. Um, have an online one in, in January. Um, this was canceled last year because of the uh, pandemic. But I'm, I met Flo Myers um, there at um, this Oxford Disfluency Conference for the first time. And we um, uh, started talking, I don't know how it came about, but she was interested in cluttering and I was interested in cluttering. And, and uh, Flo had been, uh, um, contacted by, um, um, his name was David Rowley um, in the UK uh, to, uh, to write a book on cluttering. And, and uh, so we started talking about it and I don't remember the exact details, but somehow she, um, um, I don't know if I volunteered or what that I would help her with it or, but she had never edited a book. I guess she had uh, done some writing, but, uh, but she thought that um, it would be helpful for me to um, to be involved with this as well. So, um, because you, something you may not know, I had written, a, uh, edited a book earlier, um, and it was called the Atypical Stutterer, and there was a chapter in there by on on cluttering, which I was going to write, um, but. 
I had invited a number of experts to talk about different atypical groups like the female stutterer and the, the uh, exceptionally severe stutterer and the psychologically uh, maladjusted stutterer, et cetera. But I put cluttering in there as well, partly because of that earlier work I had done in my doctoral program. And, but David Daly, who I don't know if you know the name, but he's done a lot of work in cluttering as well. Mm -hmm. I invited him to write a chapter and he said, well, I wanna write the chapter on cluttering. Um, uh, I said, well, okay. Um, so I didn't write the chapter on cluttering, but, but Flo had read that. Uh, Florence Myers had read that. And so she asked me on this book if, if I would help her or I volunteered or something. But anyway, it, it was, uh, it was a, quite a, a, a challenge. Uh, we, we got it done. Um, uh, the, the main typo in the book was they put the wrong date for the publication. Uh, 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 one of those little uh, uh, editing things that you, you'd think that, uh, that the publisher would get right. But so it was corrected in the, in the blue book. I think they, they, they had me a year earlier. It was um, I, I can't remember what the what the error was, but um, anyway, that that book uh, came out, and it was originally published by Far Publications, F A R, and um, um, and I was a little suspicious about this. It didn't seem like much of a publishing company, and it turns out that David Rowley and one of his friends had decided to start this company, and uh, Far is uh, F A R is rich and famous, spelled backwards. Um, uh, and, uh, um, and at one point they, we got a message that, that their, com their only computer had broken down. So it got held up. Um, and that's one of the reasons we shifted it over to, uh, um, to singular. Uh, we were able to at that time and, and, um, and get it republished, but, um, it's too bad I didn't buy up all the copies because they knew when they they call them remainder and all the copies there were like 500 copies they wanted to sell it to us for like a couple dollars a piece and Flo didn't want any and I thought well I don't want a whole box of books but maybe I should have I would have been able to make some money on them I guess oh yeah yeah especially um especially if you sold them like like um two two per year um on um on on Amazon because um because there's no um, 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 it's, it's like the most, the most out of print, um, book, um, uh, book ever. So, so anyway, that's, uh, that's actually really cool to, um, uh, to, um, to see two, two copies. And I, and I didn't, I, I didn't know the, the orange copy even existed. So, yeah. um, so, so that's cool. Uh, that's cool background. So, um, let me just say one other quick thing. One of the things about this book that is really cool is we got Charles Van Riper, to write the forward to it, which uh, I don't know if you, what how much you know about Charles Van Van Riper, but he was arguably the probably the greatest authority on on stuttering uh, in, in in the country, certainly in my lifetime. Um, and and he wrote this marvelous little uh, forward to the book. For me, that's the that's the gem of the book. Um, anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, and that's cool. So so how did um, how did you get him to how did you get him to write the uh, um, to write that? And, and was he an expert on on cluttering too, or or? Well, or just... he wasn't. A, he he was. He didn't spend a lot of time on cluttering, but but um, but he uh, uh, he. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, that was yeah the forward. That's right. Yeah. Um, he uh, he worked with all kinds of fluency disorders his entire life, but uh, but Flo Myers invited him and he accepted. He was getting uh, pretty close to his uh, last years at that point. Wow, that's uh, that's really cool. So um, so uh, so you've you've met a lot of uh, you've met a lot of um, pretty like famous famous people in in cluttering research um, have. Um, did you ever talk to Dessa Weiss, or was he like before before your time? Uh, I don't know when he passed away, but um, but I never uh, met him or talked to him. Um, unfortunately, I never even talked to Van Riper, although I had several opportunities. I've always considered that the biggest uh, one of the biggest failures in my life. I didn't I didn't pursue that uh, because 
he was for me probably the biggest he didn't know it but a mentor i mean my i owe my fluency to to his approach well that's um that's really uh, that's really cool um oh so um and is um so 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 speaking of um uh, speaking of famous famous people is is david daly still alive you know i wish i could answer that question um um, someone else asked me that recently, and I, I was a, he was a good friend of mine, uh, and is a good friend, um, but I haven't heard from him for several years, and um, I know he retired um, uh, from the University of Michigan and then had a private practice for, for several years in, in Michigan, um, um, and um, I, I don't know the answer to that. I, I, I need to find out. And um, and he, um, yeah, he's um, his, his approach is really is really interesting and and unique. And I, I actually like like when I was buying the book, the um, the atypical stutterer is much easier to find than um, that um, than your book on than your book on cluttering. So uh, um, so 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 I, so I I actually only read the cluttering chapter on um, on the atypical stutterer. And just kind of ignored um, ignored the rest of it. So um, so so sorry for skimming over like your um, your work and your book, um, but um, uh, um, but yeah, and, I, and I've mentioned this uh, I've mentioned this quite a few times. But but like um, Dave, um, David Daly um, uh, making a scale of cluttering, um, I think from like um, zero to hundred or, or or zero to ten or something like that um, was uh, like like that uh, that approach uh, was like. For, for me, revolutionary and like opened up my mind to a lot of uh, a lot of ways of looking at it and, and a lot of uh, like 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 kind of kind of like leveling in a video game, saying okay, well I'm um, I, and I can't remember if, if bad cluttering is zero or ten. Uh, um, I think uh, I, um, I think it was zero, but um, or no, uh, bad cluttering was ten. So. Um, so, so basically, like, like my goal is, um, like, like in a video game, work my way from from ten down to down to zero, and um, and I think um, uh, that's uh, th uh, th uh, that might segue into another question of mine, um, of um, of well, uh, w w well, actually, let's uh, let's go back to uh, uh, let's go back to other other famous. Um, Oh no, and I think you're frozen. So, oh, um, you're um, you're uh, um, you're not uh, you're not frozen. You're just intensely uh, listening to me. Um, so, um, so so could you, um, could you tell me more about? Uh, uh, so so I kind of want to go through like some famous people in in cluttering, and then you could tell me more. Uh, tell tell me a little bit about them. Okay. Uh, and, sure. and, and Dave, um, David Daly is like you. He he he. he he had stuttering, and then he worked really hard to uh, to, um, to, um, to improve it, right? Because I remember, right. he, yeah, he he was a, a I guess a, a, I didn't know him as as a young man, um, uh, but uh, but he he often told the story. I mean, of of uh, <clears throat> he was so severe that um, when he was in uh, his master's program, you know, he was given uh, clients to to work with and. And um, um, two or three of the the parents of the uh, children he was working with, he said, "Well, his stuttering is is worse than than <laughs> than uh, my child." Or there was an adult who said his stuttering was worse than his. And how could he work with him? And and uh, <clears throat> he really struggled. But he owed his um, treatment to um, um, it was Gene Cooper. Who actually helped him, um, and actually even before that, it was a person at Penn State by the name of, of Jim Frick, uh, who um, helped David get control of his stuttering. And he, like me, um, in his later years, rarely stuttered. Uh, occasionally, you would hear him stutter, but uh, but he even became a. a I don't think he was on the circuit, but but he was a kind of a motivational speaker. He was a very dynamic, powerful speaker, and uh, could just work an audience like you couldn't believe. Huh. And, and and that's interesting. And I think I think I remember from his book that he had something like like he kept like five nickels in his pocket or something, and then like every time he had a success, he like 
um, moved it over to another That's pocket right. or, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, uh, like something like that. So, uh, so, so anyway, just, uh, and, and I think that was in his, in, in his cluttering book and, and, and just, uh, just that introduction, I can, I can totally picture him as a motivational speaker because, uh, because like, even though he's talking about cluttering, he's talking about how, how he had to like, like really painfully step by step and like celebrate, um, celebrate a win that might, that, that nobody else might not, might not understand, but it was, um, it was something that he could say, Hey, well, I'm, I'm making progress. I, I don't know if it was like Nichols or whatever, but yeah. Um, yeah, he had a lot of wisdom. Uh, David had a lot of wisdom. He uh, he always talked about the 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 importance. He remember uh, he told the story that you know he was tired one day and he had his I think it was a private practice. And he had a client come in and and he was not completely um, uh, tuned in to the therapy as the clinician and. But he just kind of stepped back, I guess, mentally, and he was looking at the client, and the client was just hanging on every word that he said. I mean, just, I mean, just trying to get as much as possible. And he said it was almost an epiphany for him at that point, because one of those aha moments that that our clients give us far more power than sometimes we we or influence than we appreciate i mean that all happens when we first start out in a field but you know like anything else you get into the zone you think you're pretty good and you just sort of go on auto, on autopilot but david said that changed his life because he said from that time on he realized that it is always the client that's important, always. The clinician isn't important. We are there for the clients and we have to, we have to give them the same attention they are giving us. And, and I, that, that always struck me. I mean, he, he, he discovered that out of his own lack of attention and, at one point, and a client taught him that. That's uh, that, uh, that's really cool. Oh, um, so so could you also uh, could you also talk about Florence Myers because uh, because I um, the interesting thing about Florence Myers is is that um, that that I think um, I think like back when I was first trying to find find stuff on cluttering and th and this was in the like earlier days of the uh, the internet when there wasn't that much on there, but um, but but Florence Myers had um, had I think more like recorded uh, recorded voice uh, voice samples of clutterers uh, because she'd uh, um, she, uh, she she done a lot of she done a lot of research and, and and I think her research was was like really um, kind of um, kind of uh, more like practical. Um, uh, re research. I'm not. I'm not sure if I'm describing that right, and I and and I, I don't know enough about like university language to properly um, give uh, um, give a like complimentary description toward a um, professor. But um, but but uh, could, could you kind of talk um, talk to that and uh, and describe Florence's uh, Florence Meyer's approach? And and you guys made a video on on cluttering too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Florence is one of my dearest friends. Um, um, as I said, we met at a conference in Oxford, and uh, it just we we just became um, very close. The writing that first book and and uh, all of the other studies that we've done together, we we we've, we've collaborated on many many studies. Now I haven't done so so much in the last ten years. But uh, up to that point, um, lots and lots of studies. Now, uh, I don't know how much you know about Flo, but, uh, but, but she, she uh, is full-blooded Chinese. Uh, she uh, um, um, actually escaped from communist China um, uh, as, a, as a child. Um, and um, uh, her mother uh, brought her, her mother was a, uh, her father, I'm sorry, was a, uh, a well-respected researcher um, in, uh, I believe, uh, in, in the medical field. I forget which one. But anyway, um, um, uh, Flo and her husband, Russ, Russ have, have, were, were good friends of ours. Um, 
And Flo, is, her, her research was primarily, I would say, she's more clinical in, in her approach than I am. She, she, she is a consummate uh, clinician and, and, and worked with um, lots of clutterers, but was also very fascinated by their, their um, um, symptoms and so on. And I should back up and say, she came into cluttering through Van Riper's work. Um, and I, I should have mentioned that because he talked about four different types of stutterers, four different tracks, if you will. And there was a track four, which would be a cluttering type stutterer. So I, I, I didn't answer your question exactly accurately because he had done work in, in cluttering, although he called it a track of stuttering. And he would say, these are the cluttering type stutterers. They were the stutterers who also cluttered. Um, and so that's how she came into uh, get, be, be becoming in, interested in it. So, so um, when we began to collaborate, I, I don't think she had done very much research in cluttering, if any, before we started collaborating. Um, and I was interested in, in diagnosis um, and, and she was interested in treatment. Um, and um, after the book, you know, as I said, you get start getting in invitations. We were both invited to write or either one of us would be invited to write a chapter for a textbook on cluttering um, or an article in, in, a, in a journal. Uh, and then actually a couple of times we just submitted one uh, to, a, to a journal. And um, it was always the case that one of us would be asked, we would go ask the other one, would you like to join me? We'd check out with the in, in, person who invited us. Well, how about if, if, if we collaborate on this? Uh, and, and, and then that collaboration later evolved into two other people. But uh, um, we, we just um, worked very well together. Now, one of the interesting things is, is that my emphasis has been on trying to come up with a, a clear operational definition of stuttering, of cluttering. And, um, and I believe it's a fluency disorder. She believes it's a language disorder. We've never agreed on that uh, all these years, uh, even on what it is. Um, and we still laugh about the fact that, that uh, uh, how could we collaborate so much and, and disagree on <laughs> actually what it is that we're, we're, we're uh, investigating. But, uh, but that, that relates to our orientation. I mean, she sees the truth in my uh, approach and I see the, the truth in her approach. I'm just taking it from the perspective of a scientist and she's taking it from the perspective of a clinician. Um, um, and, uh, uh, and, and, and I also uh, have the concern that, that um, um, if, if we consider cluttering entirely a language disorder, it's gonna get lost again, as it was for a generation or two um, um, in this country. Um, <clears throat> and it's gonna be, you know, locked into autism or something like that, um, uh, the spectrum, if you will. And, uh, uh, and it will be, again, completely ignored by people uh, who are trained and supposedly competent in fluency disorders because um, um, the, the language people don't know what to do with it. Um, and the, uh, a lot of the fluency people don't know what to do with it either, but it's, it certainly fits into the little box, if you will, that we call fluency disorders far better than it fits into any other box. That's and right. um, and I'm um, I'm uh, even though even though I know you explained this to me three years ago and I and I keep trying to um, understand um, what what language is and what fluency is um, could you could you give like a, a one minute or like, like a short overview of what um, what what it would mean if if cluttering's a, a fluency disorder and what it would mean if cluttering's a language disorder or or, or like like your your perspective and Florence's perspective. 
Well, first of all, a language disorder, um, and this is how speech language pathologists define it, not, not linguists. I mean, from a linguistic standpoint, it's all language. Okay, it's just whether it's phonology or syntax or semantics or, or something else. But from a speech language pathologist perspective, language has to do with basically the, 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 the grammar and the meaning. Okay, and if you will, to some extent, the, um, they call it pragmatics, so the purpose of language. You know, why, why do we speak? Uh, you know, what, what are we trying to accomplish when we uh, speak? Um, speech has to do with the actual production of, of, of this language. And, and so it typically covers um, uh, what happens after, you know, if we're speaking, after, after the, the brain generates these commands from kind of the muscles on out. So how we articulate, how we pronounce, um, how um, uh, we use our voice is our, uh, you know, how do, we, how do we make this all happen physically? Um, and then fluency would, would, would kind of go along with that. And it's, it's, it's how smoothly and rhythmically and, and so on this all comes together. So um, that's kind of a oversimplified view that, that, that language has to do with, with kind of whatever we do to understand and, and generate uh, the ideas and the, and the uh, intentions but then speech has to do with what, how it comes out and fluency is one part of speech. Okay, and then is, is stuttering a language disorder or a fluency disorder? Well, most people would, are you saying stuttering? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is stuttering a language stuttering disorder? Stuttering would, would be primarily a speech disorder because, okay. so because not, uh, primarily because, and see, here's the difference. Stutterers usually, I mean, almost always know exactly what they wanna say. They know exactly what they wanna say. And they know how to do it, okay. Um, now, some clutterers are not sure what they're gonna, what they want to say, and so maybe it's a little more upstream, and so that's why it might be considered a language problem. That uh, you know, if you have a stroke and you have aphasia, that would be a language problem because you're, you're, there may not be anything wrong with your speaking mechanism, but but the um, um, the language behind it, if you will, or the uh, the uh, activity behind it is is um, uh, impaired in some way. Okay, so so stuttering is a speech disorder, and you think cluttering is a fluency disorder, and Flo thinks cluttering is a language disorder. Right. I mean, okay. it, it, okay. there, there, it's, 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 there are elements it's, of both. There, there are elements of both, but, but as I said, if, if, if we, if, well, see, Dasel Weiss called cluttering central language imbalance. Um, that, and it can pop up and he has these little, this iceberg, you might remember all these little icebergs yeah. coming up. There's language and there's organization and there's pronunciation. I forget all of them. I, I could look it up. Um, um, and, and, and that's okay. It, it's, it's, it's one way to conceptualize it, but that's one of the reasons that we don't have a, we did not and still don't have an excellent science of cluttering because if, if you wanna focus on uh, language disorganization and you're gonna study people that have language disorganization, my question is, are you gonna be looking at the same people who just simply have um, um, a fast jerky rate of speech? Mm -hmm. And the answer is no. You're going to be looking at, at if you if you want to develop a science of a of a of cluttering, you, we all have to agree on at least what's the minimum. I call it the lowest common denominator that will put someone in that box that we call cluttering. Now they could have all these other things, and many of them do, if not most of them do. Pure cluttering is very rare. 
I've seen a few cases where there are no language problems, there are no, uh, uh, well, no language problems, but they just simply are hard to understand because they go so fast, their, their we call it prosody, their rhythm, their, uh, their speech just sounds jerky and they pause at the wrong places. But other than that, there's absolutely nothing else wrong. Now, most clutterers have other problems such as um, learning disabilities or ADHD or, or um, oh, they're just hundreds of, of uh, not hundreds, but dozens of, of other symptoms that have been ascribed to people who clutter. Even things like um, uh, untidy personalities and, you know, uh, which is a lot yeah, of nonsense. It's no, a lot of that, nonsense. And then with that one, that, I, that then I always wonder is that is that something that like they um, someone stared at the name so long that they're like ah yeah um, yeah this um, um, this guy this guy forgot to wash uh, wash his dishes um, today so so maybe there's a uh, maybe there's a correlation. Not, right. not really interesting that like eighty percent of everyone um, regularly forgets to wash their uh, their dishes. Well, in, in the second article I ever wrote on cluttering, I did a survey of six different sources, including Dezo Weiss and uh, David Daly's chapter and several others. And I came up and just listed all the symptoms. There were 64 symptoms that had been attributed to stuttering in, in six fairly well-known uh, um, publications. And so how could you possibly put that all together in, in with and 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 generate research that would apply to all of them it would be impossible so that was my orientation uh, uh, okay and so and so that's why uh, that's why the definition became so important and uh, and why you spent um, so much time on the on the definition so so who did you uh, I know I know you you initially worked with Florence Myers on the definition. Uh, um, you you tried to collaborate with a whole bunch of people, right? Um, um, can you um, and and I think it's uh, I think it's kind of a uh, I think it's kind of a challenge. And, and actually, so my my definition's um, different than um, different than your uh, than your definition. And, and actually, I. Um, I, I just watched a video like yesterday or the, or the day before. It's um, it was like episode twenty two of a of a speech podcast that was on cluttering, and um, and she read your definition and then two other definitions, and um, and each each of those three definitions um, started off with saying it's um, that that the primary thing about cluttering is is rate, um, and and I think your definition and, and this is a really really bad version of your definition. Um, um, but, but, but like my, uh, my version of your definition is that, that cluttering, um, um, people with cluttering have a problem with rate and, and then like 95% of the time it's accompanied by, um, disfluencies and, um, and, and, and other stuff like, um, compressing, compressing words. Uh, is that a, is that a, uh, rough layman's term. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, that's, that's... Um, so, so that's your uh, that's your definition of that, that, that's your definition of cluttering. And and my definition that that, that I have in my head is uh, um, doesn't um, doesn't have anything to do with rate. It's just that um, so, so so my definition is that um, cluttering exists when um, when disfluency is and and I mean when normal when normal disfluency is like like non um, non stuttering uh, non speech production um, disfluencies um, happen at a rate that speech is um, speech is disrupted. Uh, um, so 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 my defi my definition is all is all about like like um, that that I'm having normal disfluencies but at a much much higher rate than a non uh, than a than, than a non clutter, and so um, so uh, um, so um, so so anyway, um, um, you um, you, um, you and I um, kind of don't agree on the definition of of, of cluttering, and so 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 how uh, so 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 anyway, um, and um, well, I'm kind of I'm kind of kidding about that because I 
Um, I, I totally respect your, uh, your definition. You, you know way more about it than I do. Um, that's, um, I'm, I'm just describing it for uh, the way that I think most other people can like understand, uh, understand it. Um, but, um, but obviously there are significant challenges to like coming up with a definition. So, so could you kind of talk about, talk about that? Like what, uh, what, what, what your first, what your first definition was, who you, um, who, who you ran it by, um, anyone that said, no, 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 um, you have to strike that word and strike that word. Like, like what's, um, what's the process of, uh, what, uh, what's, a, uh, and this is a pretty long um, quest that you've been on, like, like 20 or 30 years to come up with a good definition. Like, uh, what, uh, what's the, um, what's the process? What's the process? Um, what are the setbacks? Um, how do you, how, how do you even do something like that? Okay, well, first of all, um, um, I, I, I don't think I, I disagree with you as much as you might think. Um, uh, as I said, there, there I have a, uh, um, a, a, a different purpose uh, for definition uh, than you do. Uh, uh, but be that as it may, uh, I came up with this lowest common denominator definition, although um, I didn't call it that early on. Uh, just I just sat down and and I was writing a paper and uh, um, and I just thought about everything that I knew and had learned about cluttering. And it seemed to me that um, this was the um, the essence of of the definition. Um, uh, over the years, I mean, and there have been three or four different versions of that, but they're basically the same, um, or they're similar enough, as you say. Their their rate is central. There is there is something wrong with the 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 person's um, timer or um, the brain mechanisms that are responsible for. Um, for, for timing speech, okay? Um, and that, that can manifest in either, they just talk too fast, but that's probably not cluttering. Uh, that's, there are some people who are highly fluent that just talk incredibly fast. I mean, they're pretty rare, but you've probably run into them and they're so fast you almost can't understand them. Um, it, it's, I mean, they're 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 super fluent, if you will, um, and, um, and 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 actually, um, actually, I, I totally love talking to people like that. Like, like I'm I'm always listening for how fast someone how fast someone speaks, and I um, and and the reason I the reason I do that is I notice that those super fluent people um, they they have absolutely no problem with my speech. Um, because their uh, their brain is just on a on such a high to do 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 that even though um, even though when I am talking I'm kind of bouncing around they can totally follow me so so whenever uh, whenever I see uh, whenever I meet or like hear someone that I that that's saying do 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 and and they're fluently talking very very fast I'm like oh I've I've just found a new friend um, yeah so so anyway that's um, yeah uh, yeah yeah so 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 I think it's really I think it's really interesting. Uh, uh, especially, uh, especially because speaking fast, like, like there's lots of examples of speaking fast, and uh, even like, um, and the the um, the Guinness Book of World Records has has this competition for speaking fast, and, and I watched I, I watched a video, and and, um, and 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 they actually like slow down the recording and make sure that that the person that 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 gets again his world world record hits every single hits every single syllable with uh, with the correct like whatever right well so so it it the cluttering can manifest in rate but that's not that's not what actually would be cluttering cluttering tends to be the rate is 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 somehow not uh, quite normal, or the rate controller isn't whatever that is, or whatever those are. I'm sure it's not one single part of the brain. Um, um, are not working um, normally. Um, I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's just not the typical case. 
Um, and as a result of that, they, as you said, have often have more than the normal number of disfluencies. But even if they don't have the normal number of disfluencies, even the ones that they do have are are placed and and produced in such a way that the speech doesn't sound normal. And for example, they would they would put the pauses um, in the middle of a clause or a phrase rather than between clauses or phrases. Mm -hmm. um, they might put the disfluencies at or you know ums and uhs at some unusual places. Usually, those occur when the person needs a little time to think or to process the next chunk. They might be right in the middle of one, uh, which makes it just sound um, unusual. Um, and then, so with we have this basic rate problem, then they could either have too many disfluencies, they could have um, uh, something wrong with the, with the overall rhythm or, or melody of their speech, um, um, or they could have, well, they could have a number of symptoms. They could have one or all of those. And so um, for me, I, I think the, the one symptom that almost always jumps out is this jerky speech. Now, what people perceive, however, is that it's too fast. Um, and it's not unlike uh, most people who hear a foreign language for the first time being spoken, it sounds usually very fast to them. Because if you don't understand something, you're going to pay attention to the rate at which these syllables are being produced. As it turns out, yes, clutterers often do speak faster than normal, but um, in many cases, especially in, in self-formulated speech, their syllables per minute are no more rapid than than the normal. It's just that that the syllables they're producing are not put into the chunks and the rhythm that most listeners of that language would expect to hear. And so it sounds too fast, even though it isn't. Um, and, and that's really interesting, and, and especially interesting comparing it to listening to a foreign language. Um, I remember uh, I remember being uh, I remember like like talking to two like non-native speakers of of the other person's language and 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 both of them like oh you're talking too fast no no you're um, you, um, you guys are talking too fast um, so um, so so that's interesting that yeah like everyone thinks that other people's languages are are too fast when um, and, and I'm sure some of them are faster than other um, than others but, but but that's a really good correlation to someone listening to someone with cluttering and saying oh like like and and that's something that's really fascinating with uh, with me is because I think that just because cluttering is so not understood that people like uh, people hear my speech and then just don't really have a frame to uh, um, to, to say oh well this is uh, uh, this is Joseph and he has cluttered speech um, so uh, so, uh, so so that's really uh, that's really interesting comparing it to like like listening to someone of a foreign language that uh, that you don't really have a reference for and you don't really know oh how to place it and so you just say oh well they're like like your brain says they're speaking too fast even though um, even though their um, their rate might be um, even slower than your rate in your language so so yeah that's really interesting well here's an example I don't know if if you ever watch CNN but if you if you listen to Wolf Blitzer, he's he's a very popular uh, commentator and 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 but his uh, prosody his rhythm is is not near as as typical as most of the other people on CNN, and it's just where he puts his pauses. He doesn't have disfluencies, but his speech is is not as I wouldn't say he clutters at all, but but if if you want to get a sense of of someone whose rhythm is off just a little bit, just listen to Wolf Blitzer. So um, Wolf, Wolf Blitzer on CNN. Okay, I'll, I'll have to look him up. Yeah, um, and um, I mean he's a very uh, effective speaker, uh, but. It, it's not quite as easy to listen to as say Anderson Cooper or, or some of the other uh, commentators. 
And <laughs> it has to do with that prosody. Yeah, and um, and and that's um, that's really uh, that's really cool. Your your analysis and breakdown of the last like five minutes because I'm I'm just thinking a lot of a lot of things like uh, like like experiences with uh, with me and it kind of helps me to um, to 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 frame to frame things more like like my experiences. So so, so that's um, that's really cool. Um, explanation. Um, um, do you mind if we do you mind if we kind of jump back to something you said like um, sure. early in the? Um, so so you said that uh, you said that when um, I think in in high school or, or when, uh, when when you took when you took that first class, then you decided you were going to cure uh, cure stuttering, and uh, and then. Um, and, and then you kind of indicated that that, that, that might have been like kind of a naive um, or, 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 or like like 100 or 200 years before its time. Um, so, um, so 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 could you talk about um, could you talk about that like like stuttering and 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 a cure and if you if, if now like like now now do you think there's a cure for stuttering? And then also um, and also then also for cluttering um, because like one of the uh, one of the questions that I've noticed um, a lot, especially when um, especially when like like people figure out hey hey I have cluttering or like a parent um, a parent like like that's um, that's the first question that I think everyone has is oh is is there a cure for uh, is there a cure for cluttering and and, and I've got um, I've got my own thoughts on that but but I want to hear what you have to say on um, stuttering and the cure for stuttering and then cluttering and then the cure for cluttering okay. and 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 do either of those exist. Um. Okay, well, uh, first of all, um, uh, with, with stuttering, um, uh, I will, um, I, I said that maybe it's 100 years too soon. Um, it's become clear with stuttering, just as with all kinds of things, like you know, take any uh, mental illness, for example, uh, depression, schizophrenia, whatever. Um, um, even some of the more obvious um, con problems like obesity. Um, the more we know, the more we realize we don't know. That's a, that's a cliche, but it, it, it's one that's absolutely true. Um, and certainly research leads you to that conclusion. I mean, anytime one does a study, um, it just opens up new, new questions far more than answers anything uh, definitively. Um, but, or so I would have to say that in, in stuttering, uh, as, as if we look back at the last couple of decades of research in stuttering, it has moved more and more heavily into uh, the uh, brain function, into um, um, uh, all kinds of esoteric, um, uh, I wouldn't say esoteric, but, but very complicated uh, and, and highly technical um, uh, studies of, of, you know, neurological function. Of, uh, and even now there's, there, there's evidence, for example, that, that uh, there are differences in, in the white matter tracts in the brains of, of people who stutter versus those who are not. And those, those are the, if you will, the, the, uh, the, 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 the transport of information from one um, group of neurons to another. Um, I mean, they're the axons, if you will, of the, of the neurons. Um, and there are, there, are, there are structural differences. Um, and certainly we know that there are functional differences. I'm guessing the functional differences are going to far outweigh the, the, the structural differences. And um, you probably know that uh, even when I, when I was a, a student, we'd say, well, you're not going to rewire anybody's brain. Anything we do in treatment is to really to teach some way to, of, to compensate for the structure that they're born with or that they grew up with. Um, but we know now that anytime you learn something, you change your brain. I mean, it physically changes. Uh, and so um, the, the possibilities for complexity are, are magnified um, uh, uh, to almost an infinite degree if you 
if you take the perspective that that if we understand what is what is wrong with the brain that to cause stuttering or cluttering um but at the same time every experience that that person has is going to change that in some way there is virtually no way in at least in our current uh, uh state of ignorance um um, that we could account for all of that. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and, so, and, a, and a great illustration of the uh, the more the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. Right. Um, and, and 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 so it, it's not quite as bad. The bad it isn't quite all bad news because the structure stays relatively similar. But what we know, for example, in the area of genetics is that uh, you know Dennis Drena and his colleagues at NIH and other people have done uh, Shelley Craft, uh, I think she's in Chicago. Um, a number of other people have done some wonderful research in genetics. And we know now that, um, for example, in a, in a the well-known study in Pakistan, um, where there was lots of inbreeding for 400 years and there was pretty high incidence of, of stuttering, um, they were able to uncover, almost by accident, it turns out, um, a, a genetic uh, problem that would account for about 9% of the, of the stutterers. Now you think, well, that's not much. But um, as Dennis Drainus says, if you work in, in, in genetics, uh, um, if you could account for 9% of something, you're, you're probably, uh, uh, that's, a, that's a big number. I mean, they, when they look at some disorders, you know, it might be 0.2%, you know, they could account for. But, um, and, and this has to do with the genetic, um, um, two proteins, I've forgotten the details, but two proteins that have to work together to clean out cells. And this, these occur in anything from slime mold on up. And, and how could that have anything to do with stuttering? Well, it turns out that, that um, uh, if, 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 one of, if both of them are, are defective, the person is going to die. They can't survive. But with one or the other, you can, you can have different, um, um, and they're usually um, digestive problems and other kinds of things. Um, but um, but then people in, in Michigan now, Sui Chang is looking at these white matter cells and, and, and how hormones may affect the growth of the white matter cells at about the age of three where stuttering begins and, and, and starting to try put together some of the genetic facts with the structural facts, with the learning facts. And so, it's oh, and, and, be a and, long, and, 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 a long. Let me, let, let me interrupt you because your, your your microphone just um, j just went. Oh, um, oh, sorry. Okay, uh, um, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was um, you, um, you were um, you were just a little bit quiet. So so, so sorry. Um, please please continue and hopefully with the same um, passion that you were well, before. I, I, do you know where I, where where you lost me? <laughs> um, with um, with with the, uh, the white matter and... Uh, okay, um, well, it, it basically they're putting the genetics and the structural problems and the learning problems and the uh, developmental problems together. And so there's no surprise that this is highly complex. Um, it, it, there is not going to be any quote cure. Um, what there's going to be are going to be, well, I won't say that for sure. There are cures. There are cures for stuttering, but, and I don't know about cluttering. I don't know. Um, the, if we can intervene with stutterers when they're very young, while their brain is still developing, when they're still learning language, they can learn these compensations and they become the standard way that they speak. Um, but with adults, I've only seen a few real cures where people just stopped stuttering and never stuttered again, uh, forgot all about it. Um, people would say I'm cured, but I'm not. I, I still stutter and I know exactly what it feels like and it, it happens, but I just do it rarely. Um, so I, I think uh, what we're going to be looking at are, are um, 
if, if we're ever going to be looking at cures, we're, we're going to be looking at, at um, um, certain kinds of, of uh, uh, structural changes that, that might be instituted in young children. I don't know. Um, that doesn't mean that we can't get close to cure with, with behavioral treatment or cognitive treatment or um, even sometimes uh, uh, some very unusual treatments. Um, uh, some drugs have, in some individuals, have had some uh, fairly dramatic effects. Uh, but I'm not one that's, that's uh, optimistic that we're, we're in our lifetimes, um, your lifetime, um, uh, even our children, uh, my children's lifetime, are going to be able to wipe out stuttering. Mm -hmm. It's too complicated. It, it, it's, it's as complicated as, as the brain could be complicated. And, um, and it makes sense. And, and I, think, I think you answered my question just really, really quickly saying, yeah, yeah, I, I don't know about cluttering, but, um, but, but if, you had to, if you had to come up with a um, longer answer than uh, five words, uh, what would your answer be to, to the cluttering question? I would say would be less likely than it would be for stuttering. Because I personally believe that, that not believe, I, I, I suspect, I don't have a firm belief about it, but just on my observation, I, I suspect that, that there are, is more physiological involvement in cluttering than there is for stuttering. Um, I think there are more I mean, especially if you look at all people who clutter, there are so many other disorders that go along with, with cluttering that mm -hmm. it just, to me, makes sense that, that in general, there's probably more um, neurological involvement. Okay, but yeah, yeah. Just that, makes, a guess. Um, that, um, that, that makes sense to me because, um, so, so, so I always think, oh, I could, um, I could pretty easily cure my cluttering if I did one thing, which is basically like memorize one story and then only tell that story over and over and over again. Um, but, um, but, but anyway, like, like um, after about, um, after about like three days, then I'd get tired of it and go back to my normal. Uh, um, but, um, but. But uh, what, what what you described is is exactly the way that I'm thinking of it because kind of um, kind of my speech is so intertwined with the way that my brain works that it's really really tough for me to even like picture how how I want to how I want to speak how I want to be um, so, um, so 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 anyway it's um, it, it, yeah your uh, your your description and how complex and how intertwined it is i think is really i think is really good so so we're, uh, we're, well, let, we're me, let, let me just uh, say one other quick thing i think that doesn't mean that you couldn't be quote cured from anybody else's perspective i'm not there are people if they're motivated enough and their symptoms are not terribly severe or they're fairly mild could learn to come across as perfectly normal, I, if, if you wanted to work that hard at it, um, and you had the capability of doing that. There are some people who really could come across as, quote, cured, but if they let up, if they stopped thinking about it all the time or monitoring very carefully, chances are they would um, default back or go back to their default, which would be somewhat disorganized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that uh, that uh, that makes sense. And that, uh, but uh, that's uh, that's kind of uh, that's kind of depressing of, of of me thinking of like putting in like hundreds of hours to uh, to, to get like extremely fluid speech, and then um, and then your prediction exactly coming true, which is what I would guess, which is like six months later, then um, then my speech is completely back to normal. But, but but I guess if I did that, I I I'd be I I should be able to like snap back and forth into like super uh, like super fluid speech and then and then whatever. But um, but anyway, that's uh, that's a uh, that's a really good point. So um, so 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 we um, 
we we don't have much time left, but I I did want to uh, and and you uh, you mentioned like, like I was going to have this as, as a big part of your introduction that you just wrote a book, and that you've been um, hurrying to get it um, written by Christmas. Um, and and is it um, is it available now? Like like can I go and not not quite. Here's the proof. It's 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 a big book, um um, um but it's about my my. Um, a brother and sister and me in our childhood, and uh, that's me there with on the white horse. Uh, we grew up on a cattle and sheep ranch in Colorado, and um, it it has a little bit of a story of uh, of my stuttering. I mean, it summarizes it a little bit, but uh, but mostly it, it's a book about um, our childhood and a kind of a bygone era in a little corner of of the world, not too far from where you grew up, I guess. Oh yeah, and actually, so so the Little Snake River is is a river in Colorado, right? And it it well, and Wyoming, it it flows into the um, um, the Green River, um, oh, okay. and then of course the Green River goes down through Utah and eventually ends up in the Colorado. Yeah, and and actually, I um, I grew up right by the Snake River, uh, like, like 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 the the regular Snake River, or in. Um, in um, in like Idaho, um, Idaho, Oregon, and um, so that uh, that's really interesting that you grew up um, right by the Little Snake River. Right, it's it's not the Snake River. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and it, uh, I just finished it. Uh, I actually I've got some things I have to do today on it and uh, to put the final touches on, and hopefully it'll be available. I'm saying it'll be available next week on Amazon, but uh, we'll see. If, if it won't be, it'll be the next week. If not, then. Uh. Well, and, um, and so, so this is uh, this is like memoirs of your childhood, or is it's an autobiography, or what? Um, like, it's kind like, of like a complicated. It's 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 a it's a memoir of sorts, but uh, as the the uh, uh, description on the back, it's a different kind of a memoir because it's about. Uh, Three people rather than than one, and 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 it puts us into a historical perspective. Um, uh, our grandparents and how they they came about. So it, it's it's sort of a a little bit of of how that part of the West was settled, uh, and and kind of what's happened to it. Uh, uh, but then there's chapters at the end of. Uh, one of the purposes I had for writing it, I wanted to understand how it was that, and I'll never know for sure, but my brother and sister uh, and I ended up in such different places in our lives. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, that's true of any family. Huh. Yeah, that, uh, that, uh, that's uh, that's interesting. It, so it sounds like a really cool book. So how many books have you written? Um, well, not that many. I. I we have the the book with with the first full book was this one, um, um, but actually before that I I had if you call it a book I developed a test with a colleague of mine Dennis Rosello. Uh, it, it's a called the oral speech mechanism screening examination, which is a way to examine the the mouth, the tongue, the lips, the teeth, and so on. Um, uh, in a clinical evaluation, and uh, and and there's a fairly substantial um, review and guideline that goes with that, um, and so I've had three versions of that over the years. Um, I've got uh, a typical uh, stutterer book. Um, I I I've uh, I did a special edition on cluttering, which was actually a journal, but it was almost book length. Um, um, I um, did a book on uh, in, in 2015 on uh, the uh, uh, attitudes towards stuttering, stereotypes, stigma, uh, discrimination. Um, I wrote a book on um, uh, stories of stutterers in 19 uh, or uh, 2001, and I was, <laughs> was going to revise it, and I finally revised it last year. It's not out yet. This other book sort of took precedence, so I've got that one that's going to come out soon. And then I have another one I wrote last year, uh, which is uh, I, I've led a support group for years on stuttering uh, and uh, came up with really cool 
plans for each meeting with with two graduate students each week for I did this for almost 20 years and so I've taken the best of those plans and put them together for anybody that wants to start a support group or run a support group they've got lots and lots of ideas and plans and how to set it up uh, and that is virtually done too that hopefully will be out early next year um, I think that's all uh, that's enough <laughs> well, that's, that, that's really cool. So, um, anything, um, anything that we didn't um, cover that you want to uh, that you want to mention before we wrap up? Um, I don't think so. I I really appreciate the opportunity to to uh, uh, reminisce a little bit about uh, cluttering. I I as I told you personally, I've I've moved on mostly from cluttering um, in the last. Um, probably 12 years or so, although I'm still help doing research on attitudes toward cluttering. Um, we have a study that's that hopefully will be published very soon. We just did the revision uh, in Poland uh, where attitudes toward cluttering, which are slightly worse, believe it or not, than attitudes toward stuttering, um, uh, can be Im improved. And these are just people on the street. Uh, so um, um, I, I still uh, dabble in it a little bit, but mostly I've, I've uh, moved into the area of, of attitude, stereotype, stigma, and so on as it relates to stuttering. Huh. Well, uh, well, well. Thanks for um, thanks for thanks for coming back to the cluttering space for um, for for a little over an hour and um, and chatting with me. It's been um, it's been really really cool, and this has been. Uh, th this has been a really cool, a, a really great interview. So uh, thanks. Uh, thanks very much, Kim. Well, thank you. I appreciate it, Joseph. And you take care. Okay, thanks.